John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John, Grease. She was the bright-eyed Aussie good girl who made fans totally devoted to her since her movie debut in Grease. John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John explode across the motion picture screen. What was the secret sauce of this film that is, doesn't matter if you're born five years ago or 50 years ago, everybody knows it. Well, if, it, if there was a secret sauce, they would have made more of them. So I think no one really knows the recipe, but I think that film just has a magic with the music. Um, the casting, you know, it was great chemistry with everybody. In her new best-selling memoir, Don't Stop Believing, Olivia talks about getting the singing and acting bug at an early age in her native Melbourne, Australia. She won a talent contest at 15 and went straight to work on television. How did your family get to Australia? My, we, we got to Australia because my father was offered a position of headmaster of a college called Ormond College in Melbourne. He was the youngest master of um, a college in Australian history. Actually, he was, wow. four, he was 40. Her mother, Irene Born, was the daughter of Jewish-Austrian Nobel Prize winning physicist Max Born. My mother was very proud of her Jewish heritage and, and talked about it a lot. It's interesting, I, some of my closest girlfriends are Jewish. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my grandfather. Max Born, and here is Einstein, and there is Madame Curie. In fact, her grandfather was close friends with Albert Einstein. In fact, I just have a book about Einstein at home, and I just out of interest, I looked in the back to see if my grandfather's name was there, and there's about 10 references to him in this book about Einstein. They were good friends. They wrote a, my mother translated a book of letters between Einstein and my grandfather called the Born Einstein Letters, strangely. And he even helped German Jews escape to England during World War II. And did you ever meet him? No, one of the sad things in my life is I never met my grandpa. If I had to go back, as a teenager when my mother would say, you need to come meet your grandfather because he's getting old, and I'd go, oh, well, I'm busy, you know, and I always had my own life. You know what teenagers are like, so I didn't go, so I do regret that. Time Grammy winner has sold 100 million records in her career and has consistently been performing around the world. Even after going through breast cancer in the 90s, she was one of the first celebrities to put a public face to the C word. Well, I was kind of forced into it, to be honest, because. Um, I had gone for some tests at Cedar sinai and somebody at the imaging place there had seen me and got in touch with the press and they were about to do this big article that I was dying. They started way back then, I'm still here. And uh, so I decided it was probably better that I released a, a statement myself. How has it changed you as a person? Do you see the world differently? It changes you, it has to, it makes you grow. Like one of my Buddhist, one of my Buddhist friends who's married to one of my best friends, he called me up when he heard the news and said, well, congratulations, because now you will grow. And even though that sounds a strange thing when you're not really aware of it, as the years go on, you realize that's exactly right, that you don't grow in life without challenge and you don't grow without dips and valleys. You know, if it's always like that, then how do you ever learn anything? So it was um, a gift to me, I see now. Because I think it was originally thought of because it was close to the Olympics, so it was kind of a, a perfect uh, place to do it. It was unusual, it was a challenge, and uh, it's an amazing idea. For the past decade, Olivia has been traveling the world, including the Great Wall of China, to raise money to build the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness and Research Center in her hometown. So for me, when they asked me to be involved in the building of a cancer center, that was really a huge thing to take on. I wasn't sure if I should or I could, and my mother basically said, her words of wisdom, if you can help someone, do it. Little did she know that the cancer would return last year in a pelvis fracture, causing her to spend her 70th birthday as a patient in her own hospital. But Olivia credits her devoted husband, John Easterling, for being her rock. He spent decades studying plants in the Amazon and is now growing cannabis that she says has been a lifesaver. He grows it for me and he mixes maybe 30 different different strains together uh, and that has been miraculous for me for pain for sleep for anxiety 
Um, so uh, we're at the cutting edge of all these discoveries they're making. I think not only is it helping symptoms, but they're discovering it actually cures things. I broke my sacrum and I ended up in hospital in Australia and I was on high doses of morphine for pain. And I knew when I started taking it, I didn't want to be on it, but it's it can be a very highly addictive thing. I started taking cannabis at the same time and was able to wean myself off the morphine because of the cannabis. And now, 41 years after Greece first came onto the big screen, Olivia is parting with her iconic duds, including the black leather and pink lady jackets. Who would have ever imagined that it could still sell out uh, an audience every year? auction house is putting 200 items up for bid with part of the proceeds going toward the cancer center. You know, I have my guitars, I have my piano, I have my first car I ever had, I have the first saddle I ever owned, I have um, postcards I sent to my mom when I was in my teens, my first wedding dress that my daughter didn't want. <laughs> But diehard fans and collectors will pick the one that they want and hopefully get some summer lovin'. In Malibu, California, Emily Francis, I-24 News. That's the way it should be.